After establishing a regular listening practice of listening to sacred acoustics recordings, perhaps over weeks or maybe months, you may be ready to move beyond the basics to some more advanced techniques. And so we'd like to offer some of those in this video. Now, if you're a beginner, by all means, watch the video and use it for inspiration. But keep in mind that some of these techniques may be more challenging until you have established a regular listening practice with more experience. It has become very clear that every individual experiences expanded states of awareness in different ways, very unique to that particular person. And one of these is ways that we perceive different types of information. Now, some people while in expanded states of awareness, including while listening to sacred acoustics recordings, will be very visual. They will actually see things much like they see in the walking around daily space. And others will see sort of blurry things or get hints of things. Others have full-blown movies. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. If you're not having extensive visual experiences, it does not mean that you're doing it wrong. It's quite all right. Others of you may have hear different sounds or voices or messages in your mind. Others may get thoughts like telepathy thoughts popping up there in their minds. Others may have knowings, just suddenly knowing things out of the blue that came out of nowhere. And others may just simply have more physical types of feeling sensations. And all of these are completely in the normal range of experiences people have in expanded states of awareness. And so keep in mind that these are kind of related to who you are as a person. And over time, these can be developed. But generally speaking, it seems that we fall into one or two of those types of categories with a little bit of crossover. And if you're not visually seeing things, it doesn't mean your experience is any less real. Now, one thing that can be useful is to listen with a friend, and this can help to validate some of those experiences and the different ways we perceive. Now, the way this works is to set up a time when you both can listen at the same time. Two, three, four, even more than that, friends can join in if, if you have such like-minded friends to do this with. Now, you don't need to be in the same location. You can be in the same location, but you don't have to be. But the key is listen at the same time and then immediately following the listening session, jot down a few notes and then call your friend and exchange notes on what you just experienced. It can be very interesting to see if there's any overlap and also to validate if you both saw, sensed, or somehow knew the same types of things. You can also employ intention. You can intend with your friend to etherically travel to the same time and location. Now, it doesn't have to be this same time that we're in. It could be 10 years ago, 10 weeks ago. It could be 10,000 years ago. You can have any time or location that you wish as your intention to experience. And so this can be very interesting, especially when trying to explore past life memories or just maybe curiosity about what was going on in different historical periods of time. And doing this by yourself is certainly fine, but doing it with a friend can add a whole other element of exploration. And feeding off each other in those experiences can be very useful. Some people end up encountering each other very directly and very clearly. Others just maybe have a hint that the other person might be around. Any of that is valid and it's very fun to try. Now, another thing you can try is to influence and interact with your dream space while you're sleeping. The states that our tones often get people into is very similar to a dream state, except that you're entering that space from an awake space. Now, a dream is something we enter from a sleeping state, but it's very similar. Now, most of us aren't really aware that we're dreaming 
while we're dreaming like we are when we're in a meditative space. But if you can try to develop a lucid dreaming state, that can be very useful. Now, a lucid dream is a dream in which you know you're dreaming, yet all kinds of crazy things are happening. And you can sometimes manage the experience because you're aware that you're dreaming. So it's very similar. So one way to kind of overlap these two experiences is to listen to a sacred acoustics recording prior to falling asleep and have the intention that that experience will carry over into your dream space. Another thing you can do is to actually set an alarm or wake up somehow in the middle of the night, if you even if you wake up naturally, and put on a recording then. And then just kind of let yourself drift back to sleep while listening or maybe the recording finishes and you fall back asleep and see how that might affect your dream space. Those of you who have trouble remembering your dream, sometimes this can help to spark those memories. Those of you who already vividly remember your dreams, this can help sometimes to invoke those lucid dreams. And so you can really play around with those different types of expanded states of awareness, both in your dream space and your meditative space related to sacred acoustics recordings. If you're really trying to generate experience and nothing is happening, feel free to simply use your imagination. The imagination is a very powerful thing, especially when interacting in within your etheric space. And here to give us a few tips on how to do that is our guest trainer, Dr. Eben Alexander, who co-teaches along with me around the world how to get into expanded states of awareness, especially with the support of sacred acoustics recordings. Dr. Eben Alexander. Albert Einstein famously said, knowledge is nothing, imagination is everything. And of course, this is exactly what he used to approach some of the deepest wisdom that he brought to this world in the form of general relativity and other ideas that have revolutionized our thinking about the nature of reality. Now, it turns out that many inventors, not just Albert Einstein, but people like Thomas Alva Edison, uh, artists and creators like uh, Beethoven, uh, Salvador Dali, uh, have all come to realize that their greatest inspirations came from the universe, came from the outside. They did not feel that these brilliant creative insights came from within their thinking process. So in fact, this kind of uh, meditative approach and going within is a beautiful way to seek uh, new avenues of creativity that are not limited by some of our formal views of the limitations of self in our culture. Now, one thing that I've found to be tremendously helpful is the creation of an etheric space, of a, a place that I go deep in meditation where uh, I can be surrounded by many of the memories of past meditations, of an insights, uh, a library that is there to serve as a, an infinite source of creative wisdom. Uh, this etheric space can be a very valuable invention uh, within mind that then helps us to organize, helps us uh, to retreat for uh, greater insight wisdom to meet up with our guides and uh, other such uh, uses of this uh, profound uh, possibility uh, of going beyond the veil and accessing infinite universal uh, creativity and wisdom. Now, I, I recommend that this first and foremost, this etheric place that you um, assemble, be one very relaxing. So uh, just visualize things that are very relaxing to you, perhaps a, a hammock uh, on a sugar white sandy beach uh, with waving palm trees and uh, beautiful wafting breezes coming in. Make it a very relaxing place where you can go to retreat and uh, kind of contemplate and interact with higher guides and with higher wisdom. Uh, for example, early on in my uh, construction of such etheric spaces, I came to realize there really are no limits to what can be allowed. Uh, we are not just constructing a place made up of uh, imagined uh, replacements uh, for things in the physical world, but in fact it can be a place that uh, 
is a state of mind or is very far off uh, away from this uh, earthly planetary existence. I came to recognize that one of my preferred locales that presented itself to me in early meditations was actually something that appeared very much to be uh, on a planet uh, circling a star about 25,000 light years from here. So really there are no limits uh, to what can happen in our imagination. We come to realize that so much that is presented to us from the universe fills in, uh, in many ways, our understanding of the nature of all reality. So uh, all the things in our imagination are not just imagination. And this kind of deep going within is a way of proving and utilizing that in everything we do. Now, hopefully those techniques will also spur your imagination to help you do new and different things while listening to sacred acoustics recordings but if you simply want to just forget about all of that and simply be there's another way you can approach this and that is to conjure up a feeling that you wish to invoke like peace or harmony or love simply Feel that feeling at the beginning of a listening session of peace or harmony. And then as you listen, pay attention and notice how that feeling evolves when interacting with the tones. Sometimes that feeling become, can become quite expanded. Sometimes it can shift into something quite unexpected. The adventure is in the trying, the doing. And so hopefully all of these tips have sparked some kind of interest in trying new and different things while listening to sacred acoustics recordings and as always feel free to share any additional techniques that you've developed or reach out for any questions at sacredacoustics.com <laughs>